uh, for this particular example, what we want to do, uh, and I already you already should have that step written down, right? Um, is to whenever you're factoring, you want to try to pull a GCF out. Uh, you just pointed out that four can be pulled out of these three terms, right? Certainly, you can't pull an x out because of the hundred, but four is the biggest number that goes into all three of those. Again, if there is a missing coefficient, you can fill it in, but there aren't. So we do have, you know, a, b, and c. So we're good. Okay, but the next step does apply in this case. So what you want to do is pour, pull a 4 out of these three terms. You're left with 4x squared plus 15x minus 25. No problem. Anyway, while you're writing that down, uh, just remember, you know, if you pull the GCF out, you should be able to multiply it back to get the same thing. 4 times 4x squared is 16x squared. 4 times 15x is 60x. 4 times negative 25 is negative 100. The reason it's easier is because when you set your x up, you know, notice it, it, it'll it be smaller numbers to deal with, so it'll be easy to figure out what goes to the left and right of the x. Any questions on that? Um, this, and I will say this too, okay? <laughs> this number right here, you're not going to use anymore. Whatever that number is you pull out, it's not going to have an effect on your x-intercepts. You can actually just kind of forget about it. All right? It won't even be in your final answer. Nope. Actually, yes, it will be. Once you do figure out, you know, the x method, yes, it will be in your final answer. I guess what I meant to say is that it won't affect your x-intercepts or anything like that, and if you were trying to find that. Um, yeah, it won't affect the X method, but yes, it will be in the final answer. So make sure to pull it down at the end. Okay. Um, so once you do pull the 4 out, okay, it's not going to, you're going to have, you know, a new A, B, and C. Your new A, B, and C are going to de depend on what's in those parentheses. So now the coefficient of X squared is, a, is uh, your A, 4. Coefficient of X is B, which is 15. And then the number by itself is your C. So that's why we pull a GCF out, because these are going to be smaller now that we've pulled that 4 out. You know, before it would have been 16, 60, and, a, and a hundred, negative 100. It makes it easier when you pull the 4 out, or whatever the GCF is. All right, so what's going to go on top of the X? Anybody know? Good, negative 100. A times C. What goes on the bottom? 15. So we can see now, since these numbers are smaller, it'll make it easier for us to figure out what goes to the left and right of the x. I already told you that once you do these several times, you won't need to make a factor chart anymore. Can anybody see two numbers that multiply to give you... 20 and negative 5. Nice job. Wow, it's quick. 20 and negative 5. Yep, 20. I will show you the factor chart, just that you don't have to write it down. I mean, like I said, you know, he, he would... He easily saw it was 20 times negative 5 gives you negative 100. 20 plus negative 5 gives you 15. However, if you were to do the factor chart, you know, you could try several different factors. They're not going to work out. The only one that works out is 20 times negative 5 because if you add it, it gives you 15. So that's what's going to go inside of your x's. Okay? And again, it, it usually doesn't matter what order you put them in. Sometimes, actually... Sometimes, okay, you'll put them in this order and it won't factor out and you'll have to switch them. I don't know if that's going to happen on the worksheet, but um, actually, yeah, and for this particular one, it does matter which order you put it in. And I will explain why. Actually, actually, no, I don't think it, I don't think it would matter either way. Anyway, I'll show you in the next slide. Does everybody understand that this is what goes in the X? All right, 20 times negative 5 is negative 100. 20 plus negative 5 is 15. Okay. So we're going to break the middle expression apart based on those two numbers we got. All right, I guess here, here, here's how you know, okay? Can everybody see that 20X and 4X squared have a common factor in 4X? Yeah. If I were to put the minus 5X first... You know, 4 and negative 5 do not have a common factor. So try to put the, the, the um, how can I say it? 
try to put the term next to it's hard to it's hard to phrase try to put the term next to the first term so that they have a common number in other words four goes into both four and twenty but if i were to put the negative five x there you know there would be no common factor with four and negative five and the reason why is because we're going to you know pull out a gcf of the first two so what is the gcf of four x squared and twenty x 4x, yes. So 4 goes into 4 and 20, and x goes into x squared and x. All right, how about the GCF of the next two? And I'll give you a hint, they're both negative. Negative 5, yes. Okay, so we're pulling out a uh, 4x for the first. That leaves us with x plus 5. If we, we re-multiply, it's 4x times x, which is 4x squared. 4x times 5 is 20x. If we pull out a GCF for the next two, it'd be negative 5, and then you're left with x plus 5. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times positive 5 is negative 25. And we did it right because we got the same thing in the parentheses, right? And yeah, like you said, the 4, the four does carry down. That original 4 that we pulled out in this step carries down. You can't forget that because it's going to be part of your factorization. It just doesn't affect the actual x method. You just pull it down, okay? So what would this factor out to be? Okay, x plus 5 is going to be your first factor because that's what's in the parentheses. What's the next factor? The leftovers, yes. So what's underlined in red here, 4x minus 5 is going to be the other factor. Any questions before I go to the next slide? It's going to look like this, okay? You do not. Okay, that's just checking. I will erase that so you don't get confused. No, that's that's your final answer. Okay, so. Yeah, if you don't pull, you mean if you don't pull a GCF out? Yeah. Um, if you didn't pull a GCF out, your answer would be a little different. Actually, you would have to. Um, I can show you, actually. I don't want to confuse anybody. But if you didn't pull out a GCF, this is what you would have gotten. You would have gotten 4x plus 20 times 4x minus 5. So if you do it that way, you would have to see that you can still pull a 4 out of the first set of parentheses. Okay? Ultimately, you will get the same answer if you notice to do that. It just ends up being more work. Okay? So that's why you want to go ahead and pull that juicy up to start with. All right. So, I mean, if you do check your work, which, like I said, you know, you don't have to do for every problem. If you do check your work and you remultiplied it in, you would get 4x plus 20 if you multiplied the 4 back in. And um, if you foil everything out, you know, you'll get the same thing you started with, which was 16x squared plus 60x minus 100. But to me, what I normally do is I just check to make sure the steps I did were correct. And I mean, if you're getting the same thing in these parentheses, you're almost guaranteed that you did it right. And so that's it. You should be able to do the rest of the questions on your worksheet.